Can't get your hands on a fantastic PlayStation 5 like this one? Have no fear, AMD's got you covered with the almost PlayStation 5. That's right, my friends. In this brown nondescript box is the exact same silicon that's in your favorite game console, but now bigger, uglier, and a PC, allowing us to answer once and for all the question of what would happen if we installed Windows on a game console? Oh geez, no, she'll, she'll explode, you need that. We'll explode? Yeah. I'm intrigued. Just like I'm intrigued by our sponsor. Thanks to Monday.com for sponsoring this video. Monday.com's WorkOS is a powerful platform to run all your work and create any workflow. They recently launched their WorkDocs feature that allows you and your team to easily collaborate and record all your notes and ideas. Watch till the end to learn more. Right out of the gate, this is a super weird product because the processor inside this case is the AMD 4700S, a product that is readily available and listed on AMD.com and yet there is absolutely no obvious way to buy it. Now you can get your hands on them, but especially if you're in North America, you're gonna have to go a little bit outside of your comfort zone. We did find a listing on Newegg, but at a thousand dollars, it's extremely overpriced. So checking out sites like AliExpress or Taobao is gonna be a better bet. Of course, that doesn't really answer the question of what exactly it is we're getting here. Let's crack this thing open even more. I am extremely curious about this puppy. That one hole is rather enlarged. It's aluminum, but I don't think it's high grade. <laughs> the more pure the aluminum is, the more malleable it'll be. You want an alloy, okay? I mean, overall, the case doesn't seem like super hot garbage. This is a John's Bow case, right? Or at least, oh, I assumed that because I saw that this is a John's Bow. Oh wait, no, it's a hunt keypad. Where did I see John's Bow? I thought I saw John's Bow somewhere. It's got a John's Bow fan in it. So that's a, looks like 92 millimeter exhaust fan at the back of the case. And your intake is gonna be handled by drawing fresh air in from the side panel, the other more different side panel, and the top panel. Of course, the big thing I wanna have a look at is this power supply because while I've actually heard of Hunt Key, it's never in a positive context. I'm actually kind of surprised at how much this thing weighs huh. for how cheap I'm expecting it to be, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to plug it in. If you look carefully, you'll notice that this is not a dual mode power supply. There's no switch and does not support a 110 volt 60 hertz input. What that means is that if we plugged this thing in, best case scenario, it would do nothing. Worst case scenario, it could burn the place down. Our best guess is they went with a 200 to 240 volt input to avoid paying for active power factor correction circuitry inside the power supply, which doesn't inherently mean that it is a bad, unworthy power supply, but when a manufacturer is cheaping out on what has been considered a basic feature for the last 20 years, it ain't a good look. It's also really dangerous because while this label is pretty clear that you should only plug in 220 volt 50 hertz power in the event that it accidentally gets peeled off, which could happen, there is nothing preventing you from just lighting your house on fire. Or the fact it's just inside of the case from the factory. Oh, wait, what? Oh, that's right. You would have no way of knowing when it's already installed in here. Yeah. I didn't even think of that part. To be clear, we're not blaming AMD for this. It's not their fault that the system integrator who designed this system decided to cheap out in that way. It just is a thing you should probably know. As I continue disassembling this thing, I'm struck by how many different kinds of screws are in it. Not in like an FU, we wanted to make this thing hard to reassemble sort of way, but in a, it really just seems like we use whatever kinds of screws we found on the floor of the shop kind of way. Ooh. It doesn't even have a native eight pin connector. Like look at the gauge of this wiring compared to the adapter that they used because they probably just couldn't find an adapter that had such thin gauge crappy wiring. Now this is weird. I was not expecting a graphics card in the system. It looks like this is an RX 552 gig. Cheapo aluminum cooler on it. No obvious markings to indicate who the OEM is for it. Because the thing is the chip in the PlayStation 5 is more of an APU. That's to say it has both a 
CPU and a GPU baked onto the same piece of silicon. So I'm starting to have my doubts that what's under this cooler is even a PlayStation 5 processor. Oh my God, are these standoffs just like glued into the case? Now I normally wouldn't lean quite so heavily into a cheap computer for having a cheap power supply and a cheap case, but the system wasn't that cheap. Whoa, look at the size of that backplate. That is nothing like a standard AMD backplate. Huh. So here's where we're getting into the part that AMD actually makes. So we've got an AMD logo silk screened onto this board and it looks like the whole thing is meant to be sold as one integrated unit. There is no socket. It's soldered right to the main board. And this is also really interesting. There's an Intel stock cooler style cooler on this. Uh, have you noticed that there's like no RAM yet? Oh, that makes sense because it would be just baked into the SOC. Oh my, it only has a PCI Express by eight slot down here. So it's a 16 X physical slot but it's only actually wired up for eight lanes. No M.2, which is weird because the PlayStation 5 has M.2, but then the PlayStation 5 doesn't have a PCI Express slot. This is super weird. You wanna know something else that's very unfortunate about that PCI Express slot? It's Gen 2. Ooh. If there's any doubt that this cooler is custom, we can put that to rest. <laughs> Wait, what? There's four more screws for the, just the back plate. I don't know whether my expectations are higher or lower after seeing how jank this is. Oh, this may be the single weirdest motherboard that I have ever held. You know what's funny? I was looking at the layout of these traces around the board. I was like, this is so weird. It kind of looks like they all just go out in a circle and come back because they do. This thing is trippy. But is it actually a PlayStation 5 chip? Only one way to find out. Oh, well, that trace layout looks really familiar. <laughs> so, yeah, it could not be more similar. Yeah, that's, uh, wow. I mean, you don't have to have a degree in electronics engineering to figure out that these are probably architected somewhat similarly. Yeah. Wow, you know, I've never actually been close up with a PlayStation board yet. So I guess these are the NAND packages. There's your add-in M.2 slot. This is for the water-cooled PlayStation 5 project, right? Yeah, I guess you could probably say was for the water-cooled PlayStation 5 project at this point. Oh, interesting. A bunch of the caps on the back are missing. Let's see what the markings on the die say. You ready, Brandon? Big reveal. No die markings. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they just sanded the die markings right off of it. Does the regular PlayStation 5 have die markings? There's no markings on the die. Enough marveling at its weirdness, though. Let's throw this thing back together and see how she flies. Okay, moment of truth. Hey, it's got an RGB fan in it. Nice, John's bow. Do you hear how loud that fan is? Oh wow, we went straight to BIOS because I forgot to plug in the SATA cable. 4700S eight core processor desktop kit. So this is gonna be Zen 2 based, not Zen 3 like the latest 5000 series Ryzen's. There's like nothing else in here that's configurable in any way that has anything to do with that. So, oh my God, it's at 87 degrees. Did I not put it back on right? There isn't even any UEFI, non-UEFI, like boot mode, nothing. Yeah, and did you see the uh, RAM stats that they had there? 16 gigs, oh, not bad. That's the same amount as the PlayStation 5, right? Well, but normally you would have stuff like DDR4, 3200 megahertz. Like what speed it runs at, but no, no, because this is gonna be GDDR whatever, like GDDR6, right? Yeah, oh, interesting. What the heck is CPU-Z gonna say about this thing? <laughs> Don't spoil it, Alex! Sorry! Everything about this thing is just so weird. Even the way that they adapt this cooler with just a couple of punched out steel mounting plates. Like it's very almost DIY. When you're applying thermal compound to a bare die, you have to be a lot more careful to cover the whole thing because you don't want any hot spots. When there's a spreader over top of it, it's not that big of a deal, but. Oh no. That thermal compound all over my hand. <laughs> this isn't even the good tasting one. Hey Alex, how do you gallop into the BIOS? You missed it. It's a bit of a drag that it doesn't support an M.2 boot drive. Oh, wait, whoa, hi, how you doing? Is this the pre-installed Windows image? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, we're up. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is a gaming machine for gamers, okay? CPU, AMD 4700S eight core processor desktop kit. I don't think there's any way to buy this thing standalone. That's why we ended up with this weird janky system. It was just the cheapest one we could find. Memory, 16 gigs, and that's it. 
Wow, that's weird. It has an onboard USB 3 to Ethernet bridge. What? I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I wanna check that. Sony's using a completely separate outboard Ethernet controller chip. No idea how it's connected to the rest of the chipset. So obviously they had to find a different solution for this board and they went with a USB to Ethernet bridge. Weird. Oh, hey, whoa, hardware info pulls it up. Oh wait, oh damn, nope, never mind. That's the GDDR5 on the GPU. That is some uncanny valley stuff we got going on right there. Wow, that fan is going, boys. It's going, it's going. Get immersed, Linus. No, it looks like poo poo and I want to see something that's better looking. Let's go. Hey, hello. I have to go turn off the power or something. I don't care. Okay, you know what? This is good enough. Uh, at least we're not into seconds per frame territory here, but this is not a great experience. <laughs> yeah, and this is a PlayStation 4 game. It's not even a PS5 game. Do you want to just try it with a better GPU now? Can we at least turn down some settings or something? Oh, well, we're on ultimate quality. Why would it be at ultimate quality by default? Especially when it knows you don't have the minimum requirements. Let's see if that's any better. <laughs> yeah, you might have like seven FPS now. No, this is like 10. This looks like a giant boatload of garbage though. <laughs> Whoa, calm down. Jeez. Now one potential problem, will this even fit? <sighs> Do we have anything else? 2060. That's reasonable. If it wasn't already apparent, while this might be exactly the same silicon, it clearly doesn't have the same functionality as the SOC or APU or whatever you want to call it that's built into the PlayStation 5. There's no GPU, and we can already see that some of the I.O. choices that were made on this motherboard are different from what Sony did on the PlayStation 5's board. My expectations are honestly not super high though. PCIe Gen 2 by eight? By four. By four, I thought it's by eight. Supports by four Gen 2 signal. <laughs> the reason we have such a lack of PCI Express connectivity on that thing is because with the PlayStation 5, just like any modern CPU, you've got a bunch of PCI Express lanes that are built into the SOC here. But on the PlayStation 5, they're used to connect with only a couple of things. This IO hub slash controller hub down here that also acts as the PlayStation 5's SSD, as well as right here to this M.2 storage expansion slot. Most of these lanes are actually gonna be wired up to the GPU that's built into this. So if that's just not connected, it's non-trivial to, to, to tap into those lanes. You, you can't do that. So we're stuck with whatever it had to communicate with a chipset, which this also needs, and then whatever it had to communicate with an SSD. The question then becomes, are we limited by this PCI Express bandwidth? or could there be something else? Let's explore another idea by benchmarking our 4700S against a regular old Ryzen 5800X, starting with a memory read speed benchmark. We've got around 59,000 megabytes a second, okay? And, uh, oh wow, look at that, 62,000 megabytes a second. That's a lot of memory bandwidth. But what you gotta understand is that GPU memory, that's the G in GDDR6, is designed for raw bandwidth. It's the latencies where you might run into trouble. Wowee, 143 nanoseconds. I mean, that's not a lot of time, right? These are nanoseconds we're talking about, except that that is slower than a Pentium D820, a CPU from 15 years ago. Oh my God, it's slower than basically everything. I haven't looked at this ranked, that's hilarious. Yeah, like this is this is higher latency than CPUs that don't have an integrated memory controller. So to put this in context, our Ryzen 5000 series over here is more like 60 nanoseconds. That is gonna make a huge difference in regular desktop applications. Yeah, you can even do just the open Chrome test to see the difference. Uh, I just run Cinebench, see what happens. While we wait for this to finish, let's talk about why AMD didn't just allow you to plug in regular old DDR4 to this thing, because you can. That's the thing about AMD's custom silicon division. Anything that Sony or Microsoft don't need on the chip, it's not on there. That's why you gotta do this weird memory on the back thing, just like on the PlayStation 5. 3,600 points. 
Is that half? It's over half, but not by much. This is 6,000 points. All of which raises a very big question here. Why, oh why, does this product even exist? And the answer is because it already did. When you're manufacturing microprocessors, the odds of getting it right every single time is basically zero. Sure, some of your chips are going to have all of the CPU cores and GPU cores functioning, and they're gonna be within the power and thermal targets that you set. And those are gonna end up in the PlayStation 5. But some of them are gonna have runaway power consumption, or they're gonna have a GPU that doesn't work, but the CPU still works. Well now, instead of taking those and essentially turning them into e-waste, AMD has repurposed them into these budget motherboard CPU, RAM, combo things. And fundamentally, I love this move. Taking something that would have otherwise been wasted and turning it into something functional? Freaking awesome. My main issue with this product is that from a value per dollar perspective, it's not great. At $400 in China, remember, that's just for the board, CPU, and RAM, you can get much, much better performance for the dollar. And at $1,000 here in North America, it's absolutely out of the question, ridiculously overpriced. So, good effort? <laughs> just like it's a good effort, segueing to our sponsor, Monday.com. They just launched their new WorkDocs feature into beta where you and your team can connect, collaborate, and execute ideas and workflows all in one place. Their real-time engine allows hundreds of people to work together on a WorkDoc without them overwriting each other's work. And since the text is made of blocks, you can embed live objects, so WorkDocs always stays relevant. You can connect your work docs to your workflows, allowing your team to run all of their work in a single unified workspace. And you can sign up today for a free month trial at the link down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, hey, you know what? Maybe check out the weird Chinese console that we got our hands on a couple of years ago. It also featured uh, like what seemed like kind of reject PlayStation or Xbox SOCs with graphics memory on it. But that one was intended to be like an actual pre-built thing you bought as like a weird console with windows. Really, really strange product.